And this, you know, this isn't a difficult question. It's just a multi-part question that um, that kind of demonstrates all the different things about physics that you have learned. That how how it applies and why physics is cumulative and why you should uh, never forget anything that you have ever learned in physics. Or you know, at least uh, be ready to review it if you forget it. Um, so with that, let me um, go through this question. It says a uh, particle of charge Q and mass M is accelerated from rest. Okay, to initially is zero. That's good. It simplifies things probably through a potential difference of V after which it encounters a uniform magnetic field V. Okay, um, I, I always like to draw drawings. So let me draw that. Um, so I have, I'm imagining some charge Q living here and it's uh, um, the usual setup for this would be where I set up a voltage difference V between two parallel plates. And there's a hole here that will allow the charge to go through. And now out here, it's electric field free. The only thing you have out here is magnetic field. And uh, let me pretend that the magnetic field is pointing downward. Or, you know, I have oriented my set up until it appears this way from my particular drawing. Um, then you have from V cross V cross B, uh, forces upward. Do I really want that? V cross B, yeah. All right, um, so if the, since the force is upward, this will bend this way in this magnetic field. And if uh, the values are right, it'll be able to complete a circle. That's kind of what the setup is, and that's what this is getting. And then the question uh, tries to walk you through it. It goes through the steps that you should be going through. So let me go through those steps. It asks, after being accelerated through potential difference, what is the speed of the charge, the particle? And I hope some of the words here uh, be are enough of a reminder for you on what technique you should be using. The potential difference that should be reminding you of potential energy. And once you are keyed on that potential energy, then speed you should associate with kinetic energy. So you should uh, be thinking about answering this using conservation of energy. So <laughs> if you're using conservation of energy, so this is how I like to set up all the conservation law questions, uh, cons of energy. Um, so I like to start with a statement that energy is conserved. That So uh, kind of drawing these snapshots at snapshot one and snapshot two where, as the particle is exiting. At snapshot one, I have kinetic energy at one plus potential energy at one is equal to kinetic energy at two plus potential energy at two. And um, so I have some information from earlier that kinetic energy at one is zero. And um, I guess uh, I want to set up my potential energy so that my potential energy V is equal to zero here. That'll simplify things by letting me say potential energy is zero at position two. So I have this relatively simple expression. I need to express them in terms of the mechanics parameters. The potential energy here is simply charge Q times if V is equal to zero, then the here it's V. Um, sorry, I'm uh, using V in a couple different ways. Um, so that's the potential energy at one and the kinetic energy at two will be one half uh, mass, good given, times the velocity, speed of V lowercase squared. So I can solve this for speed and solving it for speed, I get square root of um, two QV over M. So that should be the answer. Uh, square root of two Q capital V over M. Oh yeah, and I guess this is a algebra thing. Uh, yeah. 
Okay. Um, inside the region of magnetic field B, assuming V is perpendicular. Oops, um, I, I kind of assumed it was perpendicular because that's the common setup. Um, it's good to see that verified that it is, it is perpendicular to the magnetic field of B, but force so does the charge the particle experience. Oh, I think I worked it out. Um, I worked out the direction. So let me just double check that the choices I'm given are the, so I, you know, figured out from the cross product that it should be, or right hand rule that it should be upward. And let me just double check to make sure that that's one of the options. Um, oh, it's not one of those options. <laughs> so <laughs> of the options, it should just be perpendicular to particle velocity. That simply comes from the fact that, um, so since the, since the force is, Q, V, cross B. This is the property of cross product, really. It's a deliberately defined such that, that this vector here is guaranteed to be perpendicular to V and perpendicular to B. So, so it should be perpendicular to V, like always as a matter of property of the force. Um, and the charge force experiences force of magnitude. Okay, that, um, well, I guess I have it here. Do I have everything? Um, oh, wait, V I'm not given directly, so I'll have to plug it in from here. Um, B I'm given directly. Um, and so is Q. Yeah, and I'm told that V is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So the most general expression for the magnitude of this is a uh, QVB sine theta, where theta is uh, where theta is the angle between V and B, and in the case where they are perpendicular, this becomes one. So it kind of becomes this simple expression. So I just write down Q, and my expression for velocity, square root of two Q capital V over M times uh, magnetic field B. And you know, you could simplify it. I see two instances of Q, and the, but the system won't enforce it. So I'm just gonna leave it at that B. And okay, the force we found in B becomes the centripetal force for the charge as it undergoes uniform circular motion. So um, all these words are there to remind you of the, hopefully the formulas you memorized, which is for uniform circular motion, you have centripetal acceleration that's given by speed squared over 2m. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I do know what I'm doing. I don't know why my mind went to uh, two. Um, the, um, the centripetal acceleration is given by speed squared over R. That's a formula I would just say, you should have it memorized. Um, it, it comes out often enough and you know, it's a simple formula. It's one of those things that to kind of um, hassle to drive, but really easy to have it memorized. So I just have it memorized. So you know, X the, whenever you have uniform circular motion, there's this much acceleration involved, which means the centripetal force is mv squared over r. And, um, and I gave you the hint here, the force above becomes the centripetal force. So I say, oh, so that must mean this is equal to the force I found up there, uh, q square root of 2QV over M times B. So now it's a matter of, um, now it's a matter of uh, simplifying it. Um, you know, uh, let me actually to go one step back and rewrite this is as actually speed V because um, if I do that, then I get to cancel this with the one factor here. Um, and I can just substitute in the regular speed of V later. Um, the question is asking for radius of curvature, R. So let me first solve this for R and then I'll plug in the expression for V. So solving it for R, I get 
uh, better I'm just doing this in my head. Stop the video if you need to and um, work it out for yourself. So solving this for R in my head, I get that R is equal to MV over QB. And if I somehow got it wrong, please tell me my real-time audience. And let me plug in what V is. Uh, v is equal to square root of 2Q capital V over M. Oh, and this is, I think, worth uh, simplifying. Yeah, um, sorry, let me just uh, make sure that this is not misinterpreted. Like M should be uh, under the square root because, yeah. Um, so this is something that I can simplify a little bit because the m on the numerator there, I can write it down as a square root of m squared, which means I have an additional factor of m to cancel that with. So it simplifies a little bit. I think it's uh, worth that little bit of simplification. Square root of 2q v m over, oh, uh, and q simplifies too. So q um, squared, square rooted, so I can imagine canceling on one factor here with one factor there. So let me not write down too many Qs. And so I have to rewrite. Um, so it, this whole thing is gonna be square root of two MV over Q times one over B. There's no getting around to that one. Um, so that should be the radius of curvature. So it's an illustration of um, all the different uh, pieces of physics that you learned um, through from physics 4.8 to up till now, and all those are needed to answer this question. Um, I, I guess uh, since that's a rather complex expression, let me just make sure I got it right. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that be, and I'll just enter this last one. Um, and you can use this entry thing. I like to just type things in uh, to MV over Q, right arrow, uh, one, oops, one more right arrow, one over B. I guess I don't technically need that one. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna assume all the intermediate steps are right.